Hello and welcome to this video where we talk about creating a topical map with ChatGPT. I've created a tool here for you that you can use and I will share the link in the comments down below. This will take just about seven to eight minutes to create this topical map together with you. And if you have been looking at other methods of creating topical maps that do not involve browsing your competitors' most successful pages, then you can forget about those old methods and put them into the rubbish bin because this new method is just a lot stronger and a lot more solid because it picks up all of the user queries both before and after they are aware of the solution and after they have purchased and it picks up on the most important competitor pages. So let's dive right in. This is Mark from Ecom Experts. So when you're using this spot, you want to start with a prompt like create a topical map for a plumbing business in Perth, Western Australia. And so this is now the foundation. The bot has created a topical map so far without web browsing, and then we will add to that in a moment. But let's go through this here. So we can see that we have multiple stages and this topic of map is adjusted for the marketing awareness stages of your buyers. So in the first stage, they are not aware of the actual um, solution. So they might be just typing in things like uh, tips for detecting a water leak, um, how hard water can affect plumbing systems, DIY versus professional, those kind of general research um, questions. Other examples could be if you're dealing with a dentist, um, one of the keywords could be in the unaware stage that my tooth hurts, right? They don't know that they need wisdom tooth removal. That's the service. They just know, hey, my tooth hurts and they type in um, tooth pain symptoms or tooth pain reasons, for example. That would be here in the first stage. Now, in the consideration stage, people are aware actually of your service. <clears throat> so let's say they have a plumbing emergency. They know they have an emergency and they need a plumbing emergency service. So they type things in like emergency plumber near me, for example, or they need um, a water filter system installed. And so that's where our service pages come in because people are aware of the service. They know that it exists and we want to rank for people who are already looking for that service. Now we're getting more specific now with the decision making stage here from commercial to residential plumbing. And interesting is also the after service stage. So what other people type in after they've visit, used your service or before. This is things like how to care for your water system after it's been installed, how to prevent block drains. So here it's not about hiring a service, but it's about um, before or after people have used your service. Then if you need this for a local um, city, that's why in the beginning we are typing in here the location if this is a local business then do type that in as well. And it now gives us the different suburbs here in Perth, Western Australia, but of course that would work for your location as well. And lastly, you can see here the um, other supporting blog posts and articles that we can write. Now in the next step, we have two options here. We can either just come to the search results, grab uh, one or two websites, and then tell ChatGPT to browse those sites. I will do that now. We are now saying, using web browsing, visit these competitor pages. I've grabbed two competitors. I think between two to four competitors is a good range. And extract their most important pages and add them to my topical map. <laughs> Another way to do that is to actually use the sitemap of a website. Oftentimes when you go to the website, you type in forward slash robots.txt. We can then grab the actual sitemap and figure out what pages they have on their site. Here's a bit of your own judgment required what would be important. Category sitemaps usually should not be indexed, so do not grab stuff that is not important. So you can see here, um, these categories should actually not be inside of SEO because they are just lists of articles really. Um, but here, this one looks more interesting, which is our um, location. So these guys have a bunch of locations in here and then they have a lot about hot water systems. So let's say, all right, you figured out you like this hot water system. You could now use a Chrome extension called Sitemap, Sitemap Explorer um, to basically use that sitemap as a starting point and download that. So you come here and let's say we use the page one. We export that, we open that up and now we get all the URLs 
in there. I would remove the um, root of the domain. So you simply do a control F and replace here. We're also splitting this off because this tool has given us the date as well. We do not need the date to save a bit of data, save chat GPT some processing power. We're going to run the formula split, select the cell that you want to split and then by what you are splitting. Here it's this delimiter. Then copy and paste this down, um, come back up. And now we got basically our cleaned list of just the sitemaps. Control shift down to delete anything we don't need. And now control shift up to copy and paste the whole list of URLs that can be part of our sitemap. So let's grab that and see first what ChatGPT has provided here based on those competitors. So it looks like it's found a couple of additions from the competitor one here, gas plumbing, hot water plumbing, tap repairs, and so on, and a couple more from the other competitor. So really nice addition. You would simply copy and paste that all into one um, sitemap, and you will end up basically with a very complete list of services. Before we dive deeper into the next step of the sitemap, which is processing the XML competitor sitemap, I want to show you how you can set up your new website to perform really well on Cloudways, because if you're a new business owner and you're creating a topical map for your new business, chances are you need to launch your website. And a fantastic hosting platform is Cloudways. I will leave some links below how to get signed up. Prices start, I believe, at $10. And so a couple of very important steps that you want to take here when it comes to creating um, a website on Cloudways. So under domain management, by default, it creates a, a standard WordPress install for you, which is I would recommend for a local business. And you can then modify it um, going from there. By default, it's giving you a URL at the cloudwaysapp.com. Um, and you can then add your own domain, let's say, your domain is plumberinperth.com. Um, you can then add this as a domain and that will be added uh, over here. And then after that, you make that a primary domain name. You will also want to make sure only after you've connected your domain that you select an SSL certificate and you set that up through here. Any email will work. Just make sure that you are adding your main domain name um, into that field and making it exactly how you want it. If you want www in front of your main domain name, add that um, here in the SSL certificate. Under the application settings here, a couple of important points. These settings here should usually not be changed. So usually don't want to enable things like core setters, but default this is disabled. Now come over here to the PHP settings. Uh, you will want to increase the memory limit. Right now, this is set just to 32 megabytes, which is the default in WordPress. Increase that depending on what type of site you have. If you have a massive e-commerce site, you might even want this to be 2000 megabytes. Uh, if you have a local business, you should be fine with 500 uh, megabytes. But yeah, look, depending on how much capacity your server has, let's say you purchase a server with um, two gigabytes of memory, that would be 2000 megabytes. You would might want to use up to 1000 megabytes for that one website. And then if you have another website, um, also set that up to 1000 so that they share that complete memory. But essentially set it as high as possible, um, depending on how many sites you have. The maximum upload file size, you might want to increase that. You know, sometimes people upload Im images larger than, than 20 megabytes, even though that's not a good idea, but you could compress them later. So just to allow that initial upload, you could set that to, let's say, 500, um, which can also help you importing files later, like a website backup. Okay, varnish settings, nothing to change here. But under WordPress settings, you want to make sure that XML RPC is set to off. That is remote access into your website. And most of the times you do not need this. And it's a security risk if it's on. The cron optimizer here is a good idea to turn on because what it will do is actually optimize the times and the requests um, that your website makes. Let's say WordPress needs to update itself and plugins. And this cron optimizer makes sure that there's no overload of those requests, which could actually down your website or make it so that it's very slow. So that's all the settings that you need in Cloudways to get started. 
I highly recommend them for website hosting, whether it's e-commerce sites or local businesses. I have all my own websites, over 70 websites on Cloudways myself. I'm a Cloudways affiliate and I've recently referred a friend to Cloudways who was with another major hosting provider previously and they were paying a thousand dollars to that other provider they started with cloudways and now they're paying about 150 to 200 dollars per month and they have better performance so um, it is quite an affordable way to do your web hosting and their support is fantastic as well so um, give them a try i'll leave the links down in the description for you below all right now let's hop back into our topic map we still have in our copy and paste here the complete sitemap from the competitor. So we now ask ChatGPT to integrate that sitemap into our existing pages above. Okay, fantastic, we've got our answer now. So we had simply copy and pasted the competitor sitemap and said, now create a full sitemap based on the competition and all previous URLs. Here's the competitor sitemap. And now it's grabbed everything that we had previously plus the competitors stuff and organized it nicely for us. We've got our core service pages, including block, block drains, water leaks, and so on. Now we have our local suburb targeting pages. Um, these are large cities or large suburbs. So I would not recommend to do a list of 300 suburbs, especially if you're starting out, only pick the absolute largest ones where you really want to provide the service because if you provide too many, Google will remove them from the index because they already have so many people competing um, for on these local suburb keywords and most likely your website is not going to add that much value if you are spamming this and you're creating 500 of these um, location pages. Then we have got a whole section just for um, hot water systems and the models as well. These are also entities that Google knows. So Ream, I believe, is a hot water system brand, um, same as Bosch and Dux and Rinai. So now you're connecting your business to these known brands and products. And that's definitely something very helpful when it comes um, to an entity understanding, because we want to teach Google our business is located in the city, providing these services, um, including those products, which is the installation and supply of those products. We've got the problem specific things. So think back to your dentist, that's the tooth pain kind of keyword. So somebody has a blocked toilet, they don't really know why that is blocked. And we've got the information pages and blog posts as well, as well as just other templates, pages like about us, contact us, book now and so on. And now as a bonus, if you have already created your own website, you can essentially ask ChatGPT, hey, this is my current sitemap. This is what the competitors have. Tell me what's the different. What are the extra pages that I need to add? Because I understand when you have already 20 to 30 pages, it can be relatively tricky to figure out what, the, what are the exact pages that you need to add to um, get ahead of the competition. So um, using that comparison is a good way to do it. This is it for this topical map tutorial. My name is Mark Muller from Ecom Experts. I hope you found it helpful and all the links will be down below so that you can get started on creating your topical map today. I'll see you in the next video.